Hello, you're watching a lesson on working with vCloud Connector. To begin with, let's cover some details on what vCloud Connector is, as well as the architecture around vCloud Connector. Now vCloud Connector, or VCC, as I'll say to save everyone from having to say that long word, or words over and over again, is by VMware's definition, an enterprise product that provides a single user interface, for overseeing multiple public and private clouds, and for transferring cloud content from one cloud to another. Now, I guess they could have also added the fact that this also ties in and allows you to uh, oversee vSphere environments as well, but the main gist is that you can tie in uh, clouds that you own, being a public cloud, or clouds that other people own slash manage in the form of a public cloud uh, by means of the VCC. And this is the glue that kind of holds them together so that you can uh, essentially migrate workloads to and from private to public or public to public or really whatever topology you want to build. Now there's two versions available to you. It's really VCC Core, which sometimes is termed basic, and VCC Advanced. Now the Core product is free. You can just download it off the website, as uh, the VMware website, as long as you have a My VMware account. And it gives you some pretty basic functionality that you need to connect different clouds or vSphere environments together. This is really focusing on starting, you know, powering off and on vApps or virtual machines, the general performance details around the different virtual machines and vApps that exist in the cloud environments, and transferring vApps, VMs, and templates to and from different environments, different clouds. Now, if you own the vCloud suite, which is a licensed product that has different tiers to it, uh, you also get the ability to use vCloud Connector Advanced. And this gives you all of the core functionality in addition to things like a shared content library, synchronized templates, and ways to do stretch data centers, a stretch layer two rather. And this all requires a license key. And basically you have to pay money for this. This isn't free. And a lot of the features that are covered in advanced are really out of scope for this lesson, we're going to focus more around the architecture and setting up the core product. So to get started with the architecture, let's look at the three main components that exist within vCloud Director. The first is the VCC server. Now this is an OVF that you download from VMware. It's a virtual appliance and it is the control point for what's called a node in the environment. It provides the user interface and it's kind of like you could probably do an analogy to the way vCenter manages vSphere hosts, the vCloud connector server manage VCC nodes. Now a node is kind of the edge point that lives inside of your vSphere environment or your cloud environment or a public cloud, and that you need a node in every cloud environment, but you'll need one server to manage all the nodes. The node has a certain amount of disk space allocated to it that it can use as like a transfer repository so that when you're connecting multiple clouds together and you want to migrate a workload, they go to the local node, and then that node talks to the node at the destination to transfer the workload. Now, the workload needs to be powered off. You can't migrate a powered-on virtual machine, but what's nice about that is that if, a power off, uh, if you're trying to move a powered-off virtual machine from one node to the next and there's an interruption, the node will kind of remember where that transfer was at and kind of pause, wait for the connection to be back up, maybe the WAN link, you know, got torn down, a, a car crashed and hit the telephone pole that's carrying your, your WAN link, I don't know, a tornado. When it gets repaired, the node will notice that the destination is back online and continue the transfer. So it gives you a little bit of resiliency as well as a staging area to migrate workloads uh, to and from different clouds. And again, you'll need at least one per environment because it is kind of the edge point that is used to migrate the workloads. Now I've also pointed out that you can have multiple tenants sharing a node. And in fact, later on, I'll show you an example of this, but that can become key in a multi-tenant environment uh, because you wouldn't want to manage hundreds of nodes if you had hundreds of clients. And a node can be shared out to different clients. They can't see each other or tenants rather. They can't, you know, they can't see the fact that they're sharing the node, but it gives you the ability to make a smaller number of nodes and share those out to your tenants. Now, the final piece is the user interface. And this really lives, I guess, within the VCC server, if you want to say it that way. It is a, it is a separate component of the architecture, 
uh, and it's really only available via the vSphere client or by this website called vcloud.vmware.com. Now we're going to focus on the interface directly from the vSphere client, but you can really have a choice in how you want to present the user interface to your users. Now don't confuse this with the fact that if you point a web browser to the VCC server, you will get a web page that pulls up, but that's really about controlling the configuration of the VCC server itself and understanding how it relates to the nodes and doing registration between the nodes. The user interface is different in that this is how we then talk to the server and understand where the nodes are, understand exactly what clouds are available. So the user interface may live on the VCC server, but it's not, it's not the web browser that you point to the server. It's a whole separate entity that's used to manage the clouds that are tied together. And because everyone likes pictures, here is a nice picture, courtesy of VMware, of the vCloud connector architecture. And basically from the bottom up, we have at the bottom layer, the data plane. Now these are where the actual clouds exist. We have a private vCloud, a vSphere, I guess you can call it with cloud with quote fingers around. It's really just a, a vSphere environment. Uh, and then on the right side, we have two public clouds down at the data plane layer. Now notice each one of these cloud environments or vSphere environments has a VCC node installed upon them. And they can all talk to one another. They're all kind of meshed together to send data to one another. Above that, you have the VCC server. And that also is kind of tied to all these different clouds so that it can then talk to those nodes and have visibility into the cloud so that you can present it higher at the client level uh, so that from vSphere client or browser connected to vcloud.vmware.com, you can then manipulate the different clouds that we have nodes installed upon. And there's a, a, a blue arrow pointing to the right at the control plane level with a star because you can ultimately host the VCC server yourself. You can put it in your environment. You can put it in your private vCloud. You can put it in the vSphere environment. Or you can deploy it in the public cloud and kind of put it behind the firewall that's in the vcloud.vmware.com environment. So you have some choices of exactly where you put the VCC server. Um, but you will need a node on each, piece, on each cloud, you know, vSphere, private vCloud, etc. So that's the high-level architecture. Let's go into the work that's involved with deploying vCloud Connector. So at a bare minimum, every server and node will require, at the very least, an IP address with a subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, and optionally, but I, I like to have host names, a host name. You know, you want to have a name for them. And I understand not every environment will be able to do that, but they need to basically have IP so that they can talk to stuff. Uh, and additionally, a gateway so they can get out of their network and talk to other networks, and a DNS server so they can resolve the names. So that's pretty much it. If you're going to build out a basic lab environment or even your environment in your private cloud uh, or vSphere environment, you're going to need at least two nodes and one server. So that basically means you'll need three IP addresses right off the bat, one for the server and one for each node. And that's pretty much it for prep work. A lot of setting up vCloud Connector is just registering one object to another object. It's just a lot of that. I will go ahead and save you some trouble because a lot of times it can be difficult to find that very annoying default username and password. So for all the server and node appliances, the username is admin and the password is VMware. It's all lowercase, so you don't have to go digging up a KB article or a white paper. There it is. Make your life a lot easier. So let me cover deployment in the two environments, vCloud and vSphere, uh, in this part of the lesson. And then we'll dive right into the lab, and I'll show you how it's all put together. So first step is pretty much we're going to deploy the VCC server and a node in the vCloud environment. Now this is the vCloud environment that, we're building through, that we have been building throughout the whole course. And really, it's just a matter of we download the VCC server and node OVF files from VMware. And then we import those nodes, uh, the node and the server rather, into vCloud Director into a catalog as vApp templates. Now you'll see in the photo below that I've taken, uh, I've finished importing the vCC server and the vCC node is about 61% done importing. That's pretty much it. You, you do an upload, import the OVF files as templates. I put them in the public catalog within my uh, catalog organization. And then anybody that's in the organization can ultimately use them.
you would then want to deploy both the server and the node into one of your organization virtual data centers. So typically, this would be something that is owned maybe by the server admins, maybe it's a like a utility organizational VDC or a production server VDC, something like that, because you're only going to have one VCC server and potentially one node. And you don't want any organization that's a tenant of yours having to deal with that. It's not their responsibility to kind of pay for the consumption of the server and the node. They're just going to leverage it in order to connect their clouds together. In the case of the demo that I'll show you in this lesson, I've gone ahead and used the developer org VDC just because I have that available. But I'm not suggesting that you necessarily need to kind of put the burden of building the VCC server and node on your developer users. That's kind of mean, unless you're trying to be mean, and I won't hold that against you. So once they're deployed and powered on using the prep work information we went to prior, which is basically an IP, you would then do registration in that we would point the VCC node towards the server and create a relationship so that the server is aware of the node. Now from a vSphere perspective, I'm going to connect basically my vSphere environment to the VCC server so that from a VCC server perspective, I can see both my cloud environment and my vSphere environment. Now I've already done the heavy lifting in the vCloud environment because I've deployed the server in the node. So really all that needs to happen in vSphere is I deploy the node OVF into vSphere. There's no, there's no vApp templates in vSphere. It's just a regular deploy OVF file process. Uh, I've got a picture of it at the bottom where I basically said I want to deploy an OVF template and I've selected the node OVF file. You would then again configure using the prep work information and again point the node to the server. At this point the server is now aware of two nodes so it knows of the vSphere cloud we'll say and the vCloud environment. So let me tab over into the lab and I'll show you where these different appliances are living so you can kind of see the layout. Okay, so I'm in the vCloud director environment. I'm gonna log in as the in the system account as the administrator user. So let me type that in. And notice I'm just at the, the vcd.glacier.local cloud. It's the, the standard login for the system uh, tab. And I'm gonna go to manage and monitor and I'm going to go into my developers organization because I've kind of saddled them with this particular virtual machine just uh, uh, out of limitation of nowhere else to give it to them. But typically we'd want to put this in some maybe utility or server or production environment just to keep it away from uh, the developers having to deal with these things. So I'm going to go to my cloud and you'll see in the V apps we have a node and a server that are running. So I'll go into the server real quick. I'm just going to click on it here. And very simple diagram. I just have the server connected to the external network. So it's directly available in my environment. If I go into the virtual machines tab, you'll see it's just, uh, the name's kind of hidden here, VCC server. It's powered on. It's running SUSE Linux. It's got an IP that's in my LAN. Uh, and there we go. There's really nothing to it. It's one virtual machine. And it doesn't even consume that many resources. It's kind of small. Uh, if we go to VMs, I can see it in there as well. Uh, let me get the names a little, a little wider here. So there's the server right there. Uh, and then here's the node. So let me pull that open a little bit wider. And I don't know why it says DHCP here. It's not using DHCP. We've actually uh, answered some questions when it was deployed. Uh, but anyways, here's the server and the node. And if I go back to vApps here and I click on the node, we can see the information on him. Very similar. It's running a LAN IP address that I can get to. Uh, externally in my environment and the diagram is very similar it just has one network going directly out so it's using an external direct connection now how did I get these nodes in here well like I said we've uh, put them in the catalog so I'll go back to organizations and we'll go to the public catalog organization and if I go to catalogs here there's a public catalog and click on that a lot of clicking to get where you need to go it's unfortunate but uh, so here we've got some templates that I've created. I made a node template and a server template. And really all I needed to do to make those is just select upload and then browse to the location where I've stored the OVF files. I'll click on browse there. And if I go to my computer, to applications, we've got, I've downloaded the node and the server OVF files. If I go in server, whoop, OVF, there's the OVF file. You would click upload 
populates the name and then give it a server uh, name here. So it may be something like VCC server 2.0, whatever you want to call it, or two. And then a name, vCloud connector server two. Put it on the disk that you want in the organizational virtual organization virtual data center that you want and upload it. And that's pretty much it. And then when you deploy it, it just asks you for the prep work information, IP, subnet, gateway, and a DNS entry. So there we go. That's the stuff running. Uh, I'm sorry. That's the, let me go to developers here. Those are the two VApps that I'm running, server and node. They're inside of the vCloud. Now I'm going to change gears real quick. I'm going to head to the vSphere environment and show you where that node is. All right. So I've tabbed over. We're logged into the vSphere client within my management cluster. And you can see right here, I've deployed an OVF. Uh, and we have a virtual appliance called the vCloud Connector node. Very similar IP. I've just used 93, 94, and 95. Uh, and the node is sitting here on that same kind of network, and it's available uh, for the vCloud Connector server to tie into. So it can now, basically, the vCloud Connector now has a presence uh, in both uh, a node in the vSphere environment and a node in the vCloud environment. So we kind of have feelers out so that we can manage and view both sides of the environment. Now that would be really handy in a couple scenarios. Perhaps you have a vSphere environment that you're trying to evacuate and get into vCloud. The vCloud connector is a great way to do that. It creates a bridge between the two environments, even if they're not uh, in the same kind of uh, data plane. You could potentially put the connector nodes on each side so that you could migrate workloads from one to the other. Or perhaps you have an environment that calls for kind of a standard vSphere environment and a more non-production uh, vCloud environment so that once something finishes the development life cycle within the vCloud environment, maybe it's ported over to the vSphere environment to kind of live indefinitely, so to speak. There's a lot of use cases for it, and it's pretty easy to use. But let's move right into that. I'm going to switch back to the lesson, and we'll move on to the configuration piece. Okay, so now we're going to move into the actual configuration of the vCloud connector. And to do that, we're going to use three distinct environments. Now, two of them you should be familiar with from this course. One is the, the vSphere management cluster. The second is the VMware vCloud environment that we built throughout this whole course using vCloud Director. And the third is the hybrid cloud evaluation that's available from VMware, which is a full-fledged public cloud that we can tie vCloud connector into. And this one's kind of cool because this only came out at least from the perspective when this was recorded, maybe a month or so ago. So without any further ado, let's move right into the configuration in the lab. Now to begin, I've got Internet Explorer open, and I, of course, like shortcuts in that I've made favorites for the connector server, the vCloud node, and the vSphere node. And the order of operations is really we need to register all the nodes with the cloud that they live in, or vSphere environment for one of them. Then we register the nodes to the server. Then we register the user interface to the vSphere client, and then we can use the user interface. So really a lot of the work is just a lot of registrations between object A and object B. So let's begin. I'll connect to the vCloud connector node, and we'll register that. So I'm going to get an error. And I'm just pointing to HTTPS and then the IP that I gave that node. Nothing fancy. Uh, you can either put the 5480 in yourself, or I found that it'll redirect for you. So I'll continue to that website. And the, the magic open sesame password is admin and then passwords VMware. We'll log in there. And there we go. We're in a node. I mean, there's not much to it. It has four tabs, system network update and node. Really, all we're concerned with is Node, because as you can imagine, system is basically, here's what you're running, reboot, shut down. Network is the network configuration, which you've already set when you deployed the vApp template. Uh, it asks you, what's my IP? What's my subnet? All the prep work information is prompted, and you just plug it in, power it on, it's ready to rock. Update is used if you want to actually do an update to the Node, if there's new code that comes out and you want to upgrade to it. And then node, which I'm going to click on, is really the meat and potatoes of what a node does. And you'll notice, really, it defaults to the cloud tab, which is kind of nice. And once the little circle here requesting information gets done, all we're really going to do 
is see the fact that I've already registered this and I'll show you kind of the config and go over what these options do. So let's let that load. It'll just take a second. All right, and there it's loaded. And you can see, basically you have to answer four questions. It's very straightforward. What kind of cloud is this node deployed inside of? vCloud, vSphere, that's pretty much it. Now this one is the node inside my vCloud environment. So I chose vCloud or vCloud director to be specific. And then you need a cloud URL. It's basically the vCenter IP, HTTPS colon slash slash vCenter IP, or HTTPS colon slash slash vCloud IP slash cloud. Now I've cheated a little bit to show you it can be done. I'm actually using the fully qualified domain name of my vCloud director server. So I'm using vcd.glacier.local. And in fact, I didn't even put the cloud on the end, either that or it got rid of it for me. I can't remember which, but that's pretty much it. Not nothing hard there. You have two, two options here. Ignore the SSL certificate, which I have checked because I'm using a self-signed certificate. And if I hadn't checked this, it would fail saying, this is a bogus cert, I'm not going to register. And it would be in all rights to do that because it definitely is a bogus certificate. If you're using real certificates, uncheck that box and it'll validate them for you. The second option, use proxy. I have that off because this node does have a direct connection to the internet. It can talk out to other nodes. However, if I were doing a proxy connection, which is basically a, a kind of an intermediary gateway to get you out to the internet, I would check that box and then go in the networking tab up here and fill in my proxy information. Since I'm not doing that, I don't have to worry about it. You would then click update the config or new config in the case of it not being configured, and a box says, way to go, you've configured it. You know, thumbs up, all that good stuff. No, really, it just says right here that the cloud registration was successful, you're good to go. So the vCloud connector node is registered. The next thing I need to do is register the vSphere node. So I will go to my handy dandy favorites here. We'll go to the vSphere connector node. I will leave this page and I will be very sure that I want to leave this page. Again, same thing except the IP, uh, the other one's 94, this one is 93. So I will continue. Same kind of stuff. Log in with admin, VMware, click the login button. You can see I've actually used pretty much it's the same uh, version number, same build number. Really nothing has changed. The host, host name is very similar. Uh, the only difference here, if I click node, is once this updates, you'll see that I chose cloud type of vSphere. There it is. And the URL is an IP this time, just to show you both work. Uh, this is the IP to my vCenter server. Uh, so if I were to ping uh, basically uh, vcenter.glacier.local, it would resolve to this. Now, now this is the IP of my resource clusters vcenter. It's not the vcloud vcenter because I wanted to show you a completely different environment other than the vcloud environment. So for a vcloud environment, we want to tie it to vcloud director and we choose cloud type vcloud director right here. For a vSphere envir environment, we tie it to the vcenter server that's managing vSphere. Now the options down here are the same. I'm not using, you know, legitimate certs, so I said ignore. And I don't need a proxy because I have internet connection directly. And I'll just show you, uh, if I were to click update here, kind of what the message is. It'll say it's requesting the info up here. You get the little swirly bird going on. And in a second, we should see registration successful right up here. We'll give it a second. There we go. Cloud registration. It says updated. If it were new, it would say successful or, or you know, you're, you're good to go, basically. Green is good. <laughs> is the way you can remember that. I believe all the error messages are in red, so it's kind of a stoplight. Uh, you can go or you need to stop and fix it. So at this point, all the nodes are registered. Now, if you remember, I also said there's a third uh, option we're going to do. We're going to connect it to the uh, VMware hybrid cloud evaluation. That node is already set up by VMware. So we're kind of getting the perspective of a tenant of the cloud and that they have built out a vCloud connector node that is shared from multi-tenant and all we have to do is tie into it. So at this point, all the nodes are configured. We now need to move over to the vCloud connector server and register all the nodes to the server. So I'm gonna to go to my favorites. We're gonna to go to the vCloud connector server. I'm gonna leave this page and really leave this page and continue to this website and all these other fancy hurdles that are put up. Again, pretty much the same thing. I'm connecting to the IP of my vCloud connector server with that same port 5480. Same username and password, it's admin and VMware. Click login. 
Now you'll notice this one looks a little different because instead of just nodes over here, we also have server. And you know, it's called something different. It's called VCC server, yada yada. It's a run, running VCloud connector server, not a node. The rest is pretty much the same system network update, but now we have server, which is, which is new. If I click on that, you can see we now have server information and a place to enter a license key. If we wanted to go above core and into vCloud Connector Server Advanced, we could put in a license key and that would activate the Advanced Edition. Now, I'm going to skip over server. We'll come back to it, but I'm going to go to nodes really quick because that's the next config option. If I go to nodes, you'll see here's all the nodes I've configured for vCloud Connector Server. Now this one already exists, this local content library, that one's there by default. You don't have to make that. What I registered was the hybrid cloud evaluation, the vCloud that we made for Chicago, the vCloud Chicago, and that should look familiar. There's the vcd.glacier.local, and my vSphere environment. So these are all the different nodes that are set up, the 93, the 94, and then here's the special one used by the hybrid cloud evaluation. So let's go through them, starting with the vCloud Chicago. If I click on the little widget here, we can edit it. And this is all the information I put in originally. There's nothing special here. Uh, I gave it a fun name, vCloud Chicago, because that's going to be what shows up when a user is then using the user interface. It's a lot of the word user there, but when somebody goes in to use the user interface, this is the, the name and description they're going to see of this cloud. So I give it a name, a description. I then need the URL to the node. And we know that the .94 node, based on the prep work, is the node that is living inside of vCloud. It's not a public node. This is a private cloud. I don't need a proxy to get to it. I have direct internet connection. And I need to ignore the SSL certificates because they are not, self they are not signed. Uh, they are not validly signed, I should say. They are self-signed. So that's pretty straightforward, right? There's nothing too hard there. Uh, and then we need to give it cloud information. What type of cloud are we talking to here? So in this case, it's pretty much similar. We have vSphere and vCloud. This node lives in vCloud, so I need to tell it some information about vCloud. What organization name do I want to present uh, with someone tying to this node? Well, I'm going to give them the developer uh, organization, as well as I'm using uh, an org admin named org admin, I actually made a user called org admin that has organizational admin authority over that vCloud director organization name developers. And I put the password in. That's pretty much it. Um, if you go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and put in this password here. I think I remember it and click update. And there we go. It's, it's back in here. I believe we'll get a little message shortly saying that it's uh, good to go. Uh, moving right along, we've got the vSphere environment. I'll go ahead and hit the little widget here and edit. And here we've got, uh, it's, I just called it vSphere. We could call it uh, vSphere production or the vSphere environment. It just says vSphere 5.1 environment. The node for that one is .93. The same choices were made here. And the cloud type is slightly different. It's a cloud type of vSphere. So there is no, I can't even click on it. There is no org name for vCloud director because we're not telling it to talk to vCloud director. We're saying talk to vSphere. So all I really need to do is give it some kind of service account into the vSphere environment. Now I cheated here because I used just me uh, because I have you know ultimate authority over everything but this would probably be a service account maybe you'd call it vCloud connector or VCC or something that you know is basically what you want your tenants to be able to see. Alright so I'll back out of that and then finally is the hybrid cloud evaluation and this has this really interesting you know if you notice this one has some interesting looking information here this is all different stuff. So let's edit this real quick and I'll show you how that works. So again, I gave it a descriptive name. This is actually, there's a, a document on the internet. If you go to the uh, vcloud.vmware.com website that tells you you should put this in. This is a specific name that needs to be used. So it's vccnode.vcloudservice.vmware.com. That's a very specific name and no matter what you're tying into this hybrid cloud evaluation, no matter what your, your VMs or whatever are, you're using this multi-tenant node that's provided for you. Now this is a public node, so I've checked the public box, but I did go ahead and remain the ignore SSL certificate because I don't want to check the certs. Again, I don't need a proxy to get to it. And it's a little different here too because I'm running vCloud Director, so it's not a vSphere environment. My org name is a random number that's kind of assigned to me, so I'm org 
three two one zero. This is just a kind of a a temp org that I made for the demonstration uh, of the on this course. So it doesn't really matter what it is, but when you sign up for the evaluation, you'll be given a number. So you have to put the number in there. And then I made a user, you know, strangely enough, I called it train signal. Who? Why, why would that be? I don't know, just for fun. Uh, train signal, and I put a password in for that user. Uh, so I can put the password in here again and register them a second time. And that's it. So they're all showing up and available. And that's perfect. We now have all the nodes are now tied to the server. So the node kind of sits in the middle is tied to the server and it also is registered with the cloud so it's aware of both sides of the of the equation and then the server then talks to all the nodes so you have a nice hierarchy there of basically cloud talks to node talks to server now when I go into server we can kinda complete the last config item and I know there's a ton of these little config items and boxes to check and all sorts of other fun we're gonna go to vSphere client and this is where you can register the vCloud connector server to your vSphere client. In order to do that, it needs to talk to a vCenter server. And you know, obviously, uh, right here, it tells you everything you need to know about the vCenter. Uh, basically, you need an IP or the fully qualified domain name, that's the FQDN, a username and password, uh, and that's it. You would then hit register, which is grayed out now, um, and it would then register the plugin with vSphere client and then kind of install it and get it ready to rock. That way, once it's registered, you could go in and actually manage your vCloud connector server user environment or user interface from the vSphere client. So I've already done that. Um, I can go ahead and put it back in one more time just for fun, just for grins. So that one is, I don't need the IP. Uh, actually, I'll just put the IP in again. You can use either one. I'll use my account because I like to, to cheat like that. And we'll put in a password and let's update the registration. And the little circly thing. Oh, bad password. Let me try again. Let's update the registration. I'm going to overwrite the registration. It's either that or it doesn't like the fact that I put this glacier stuff. Let me just get that off of there and see if that works. All right, one last try here and then we'll move on. Oh, actually, I know what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, I'm trying to register using my domain account, but we're actually talking to the vCenter server that's managing my cloud environment, which is a completely different set of credentials. So that would never work, no matter how funny I put in the password. I actually need to use a special account that I made called root. So let me do that real quick. There we go. See? See what happens when it, and, and I, kind of, I think I mentioned it earlier in, the, in this lesson as well. I hit the same kind of snag. So for some reason, I keep repeating that one mistake. So I got to put that down on my list of things to stop doing wrong. Uh, but essentially, that's what you get, registration updated, or in the case of a new registration, it would say registration complete, uh, and then you're good to go. So let's move on over to the vSphere client, and I'll show you the, the kind of the final crowning achievement here of the vCloud connector user interface. Okay, so I've logged into the private cloud. Uh, it's basically the vCenter cloud environment that is running basically vCloud director environment for me. This is the one that I've registered the vCloud connector to, and I'm in the home page. It's just, you know, you go to the little home uh, widget here, and you can see under solutions and applications, we have vCloud connector. If for some reason that's not working, it's under the plugins, so you could manage plugins here. You should see vCloud connector is enabled. If for some reason it's not, you can right-click it and, and choose Enabled. Maybe it got the plugin was uh, uh, installed, but the vCloud Connector server got rebooted or something like that. You just need to re-enable it. Uh, but there we go. shows vCloud Connector version 2.0 is enabled. That's perfect. And we'll click on this widget here. And there we go. Welcome to vCloud Connector user interface. I mean, finally, it takes, it takes a lot of config to get here. Uh, fortunately, you never really have to touch that config again. Uh, but it's pretty blank right now. I have no clouds set up. Uh, so this screen plus button is very inviting. Uh, you click here, it adds objects. And if you've worked with the newer vSphere web client, this should look pretty similar. This is kind of the look and feel that they're going for uh, VMware as a whole. I feel this is kind of the user interface that they're trying to share with people. So I click the plus sign, and there we go. There's all the clouds that I set up. We've got the vSphere environment, the vCloud director environment in Chicago, and that hybrid cloud evaluation. 
So let's add the hybrid cloud evaluation uh, first. So let me add in my train signal user and his password, if I got it right. Maybe I didn't. Oh, try it again. Password. And there we go. So now we can see we've got a choice of the hybrid cloud evaluation. If I expand that out, I actually do have an org VDC in here called 3210, because that's my assigned number. And we've got some templates. So if I go to templates and click templates, I can see VMware has provided me with all sorts of really cool templates in here. Uh, we got Debian and CentOS and just enough OS and LAMP stack and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, that was uh, basically 39 in total. They were all provided for me because I'm a tenant in this cloud. And if I expand out uh, this particular cloud here, the 3210 public, I can look at some virtual machines. I do have one uh, called Wall Network running in there. Uh, it's running Ubuntu Linux. You know, nothing really fancy going on there. I can basically the choice power off, power on, uh, resume, pause, uh, reset the machine, etc. So right now I can't do very much because I only have one cloud, so I can't move anything in between the clouds. So let's add another one. I'll go to clouds. We'll add button there. Notice as soon as you add a cloud, it's no longer a choice. That's kind of nice. You don't have to remember what you've added. It just shows you what, what is left. So we'll add our private cloud. And now we'll have a private and a public cloud. That's kind of cool. So I'm just going to add, uh, let's add my org admin guy and his password, if, if I got this right. Hey, imagine that. So now we've got two clouds. We've got a public cloud and a private cloud. So we have achieved hybrid cloud critical mass. We now have officially a hybrid cloud. Give yourself a pat on the back if you're doing this in your lab at home. Uh, so we can see, let's go to the cloud here, the cloud Chicago. It takes a second to, to populate sometimes. Uh, so we've got the developers organization. We've got the public catalog. And you can see here, because I have virtual machines selected, here's all the VMs that I've built so far, a SharePoint, the two vCloud connector servers, and the vSphere management assistant. We can also look at the vApps that exist. And we can see all the templates that we've built, the Cloudy app, the VCC node, VCC server, et cetera, uh, and some media that was uploaded for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So that's kind of cool. And if we go into developers and then the developer OVDC, you get kind of the same view, but just specifically that stuff that's going on in there. And then there's an actions. Oop, well, come on. Uh, just hover over it. There we go. There's an actions thing here as well. Um, in that, uh, and by the way, the issue I was having was apparently the click does not like to work. So you just hover over and then it expands. So I guess clicking is uh, is not cool. Uh, I could do a copy. So I could say, oh, yeah, this is, this is cool. I want to copy this out. Uh, let's see, select it from the developer catalog. I want to copy it to my hybrid cloud evaluation. So I make a copy of Joe Bob's awesome V app, the best name ever. It is super awesome. And we'll even put a smiley face there just to be completely awesome and fun. Uh, and destination catalog. Oh, we don't have a catalog in the hybrid cloud yet. So we'd have to build a catalog in the hybrid cloud. Let's see if we can do that uh, from here. I don't think we can. I don't think we can build a catalog in this particular uh, environment. But that's OK. Let's see here. Yeah, I'd have to actually go in there to do that. So let's do this instead. I'll open clouds. We'll add the last cloud there, the vSphere environment. And I will enter, I think, I think this time my stuff will work here. I'll try it just Chris, see if that works. All right, we'll try the full name there. See if that works. There we go. And now we've got the vSphere environment as well. So now we could potentially copy, let's go back to Joe Bob's awesome V app. And let's see if we can copy that out now. So from developer. See if we can target vSphere here. There we go. And now it asks you for a folder because there are no catalogs in vSphere. So I could just put it in this demo folder here. So I can say I want to copy Joe Bob's awesome vApp. Actually, I don't know if, yeah, there we go. I was going to say we need to give it a fun, uh, in, uh, a fun name there, but I guess that'll work. I'll put it in my lab cluster. Uh, we'll put it on this data store for virtual machines. Oh, we need a disk format. Sorry about that. Thin, thin provision is fine. And we won't power it on next. And it's just telling us we're going to copy a VApp from our cloud called Joe Bob's Awesome VApp to vSphere in this inf information right here. So what if Joe Bob's Awesome VApp was this really cool app that your developers have been working on for months? And I was like, oh, this thing is just the bee's knees 
Well, now we are showing a way that we can actually copy that out from the cloud, from the private cloud, to the vSphere environment. And then we can say, all right, this is now a full production server. You know, server admins just care and feed this thing, but we won't be making any changes to it uh, from a server perspective. We might do code upgrades. We might, you know, give it some service packs, some patches, etc. But this is now a full-fledged production application. We don't see it going away anymore. So you could use vCloud Connector to move that over. And I'll just go ahead and finish it just for fun. And you can see a task is occurring where it's copying over Joe Bob's awesome vApp. So this has pretty much been a demonstration of the configuration and kind of the end state showing what it looks like to have the vCloud connector environment up and running. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and this course, and I look forward to seeing you in another course in the future.